Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. Today we're going to talk about how we can interpret chemical reactions in terms of moles, mass, and particles. Ammonia, which has the formula NH3, is widely used as a fertilizer. It's an important industrial chemical. It's produced on a very large scale by reacting nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas. And we can write a balanced equation for the synthesis of ammonia from its elements. N2 reacts with 3H2 to form two NH3 molecules. We can think about this on a particle scale. We can draw an N2 molecule, we can draw three H2 molecules, and we can show two NH3 molecules. We can think about this reaction in terms of the numbers and kinds of atoms involved. If I've got my nitrogen molecule, that's two atoms of nitrogen. I've got three hydrogen molecules, that's six atoms of hydrogen when I'm looking at my reactants. When I consider the products, I've got two NH3 molecules, Again, that's two nitrogen atoms and six hydrogen atoms. The number and kinds of atoms on each side of the equation are the same. That's what we mean by a balanced equation, of course. We can think about it on a molecule level. We've kind of alluded to this a little bit already. We've got one nitrogen molecule reacting with three hydrogen molecules to form two NH3 molecules. It's important to note that the coefficients from the balanced equation tell us the ratios of the molecules and how they react, 1N2 to 3H2. 3H2 to 2NH3. We really use these relationships a lot in our stoichiometry unit. We could scale this reaction up. We're not going to have just one nitrogen molecule reacting. What if we had three molecules of nitrogen reacting? The ratios in the balanced equation tell us that I would then need nine hydrogen molecules to react, and I'd end up making six ammonia molecules. So I'm keeping these same ratios, but on a larger scale. In the real world, of course, we're not going to have three molecules and nine molecules. We're going to have huge, huge numbers of molecules reacting. So let's scale it up even more. What if 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen molecules reacted? Well, based on our ratios, if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen molecules, I would need three times that number of molecules for hydrogen, or 1.81 times 10 to the 24th hydrogen molecules. And for ammonia, I would need two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of ammonia to form. Now, you might have guessed that I chose this number deliberately. It's Avogadro's number. So if I have Avogadro's number worth of nitrogen molecules, that's a mole of nitrogen molecules. And I can interpret the equation on a mole basis. One mole of nitrogen molecules reacts with three moles of hydrogen molecules, which then goes on to form two ammonia molecules. And again, the coefficients from the balanced equation give us the ratio of moles. They gave us ratios of molecules, and now we can interpret them as ratios of moles, whatever makes more sense for the problem that we're doing. We can think about this reaction in terms of the masses of the reacting particles as well. If I have one mole of nitrogen reacting, we know from our periodic table that that would be a mass of about 28 grams. For hydrogen, I need three moles of hydrogen to react, so I need three times the molar mass of hydrogen, or about six grams. I form two moles of ammonia, so I need two times the molar mass of NH3, and that's about 34 grams. So what I see is that the total mass of the reactants equals the total mass of the products, conservation of mass. In any balanced equation, what we're going to see is that mass will always be conserved, just like on the previous slide. The total mass of the products equals the total mass of the reactants. And the atoms are conserved. However many atoms of each type I have on the left, I have on the right side of the equation as well. But if we look at the balanced equation, the number of molecules is not necessarily going to be conserved. I've got four reactant molecules, two product molecules. That's not conserved. I would have four moles of reactants to two moles of products. So moles and molecules are not necessarily going to be conserved. There will be some reactions where that is the case. But we can only be certain that mass and atoms will be conserved. Let's consider the reaction for the synthesis of water from its elements and talk about how we can use these proportions from the balanced equation to do some problem solving. How many moles of oxygen gas would be required to produce 10 moles of water? Now the balanced equation talks about two moles of water. So if I wanna have 10 moles of water, I need to scale that up by a factor of five. So to get 10 moles of water, I need to multiply by five. That means I need to multiply the O2 by five. I would need five moles of O2 to make 10 moles of water. So we can use this for proportional reasoning. And this proportional reasoning 
becomes the basis of the entire stoichiometry unit. We don't always write it out in this format. We do a lot with dimensional analysis. But this is the kind of thinking and problem solving that we need to do in this unit. Let's do another question based on this reaction. If four molecules of hydrogen gas react, how many molecules of oxygen gas will be consumed? We see that for every two molecules of hydrogen, I need one molecule of oxygen. So if I want to react four molecules of hydrogen gas, I need to multiply the equation by two. And so I would need two molecules of O2 to react with four molecules of hydrogen gas. Let's summarize what we've talked about in this webcast. We can interpret a chemical equation in several different ways. We can do it in terms of the atoms involved. We can do it in terms of the numbers and types of molecules involved. We can interpret on a mole basis and on a mass basis. And we might go back and forth between different levels of this depending on the problem that we're solving. The reason we're interested in doing this is that the ratios the proportionalities allow us to make predictions and calculations. How much of the product will I get for a certain amount of starting material? How much of this other reactant will I need given a certain quantity of this reactant? And these proportional reasoning problems are a very important part. They're really the basis of stoichiometry, which is the current unit. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest videos. Like the video, leave a comment, and study chemistry every day. That's the key to success.